Welcome to Date with Danu, right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Today, I'm super happy to have two interesting personalities. Uh, you would have seen them around, you would have heard their music, you would have enjoyed their work when it comes to putting up beautiful places together and so much more. They're so talented and a brilliant duo to have a good conversation with. I'm happy to have Mano Chanmugam and Neo Maltia. My name is Mano Chanmugam. Uh, my postgraduate and postgraduate life was all in England, 20 odd years, and then came back as a nuclear engineer. Uh, I'm now a fellow of the Institute of Nuclear Engineers and uh, done all my postgraduate work in nuclear science. I got to know Danu when I got back from England and started working intricately with uh, Pete Wright Life. He had a very charming uh, demeanor, but he was small and he, he was, I think, suddenly grew up to be a very big human being. But Danu's life was always around music and, and the, 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 he was a member of the college choir, the junior choir. Uh, and I got to know him well when he came to live close to me in Piliandala. Hi, I'm Neomal Dialvis. My background is in actually music, music education mainly, and then performance. Um, um, and of course, for the last 25 years, I've been working with this amazing engineer stroke architect. So I've had a great grounding in architecture and construction. And uh, together with uh, my dear friend Mano Chamugam, we have this beautiful iconic home called Hunter's End, which we maintain and run for the enhancement of performing arts. Um, and so we continue to do that today, even during this bad uh, pandemic times and economic recession, we tend to encourage our young musicians to keep going with their music and uh, with their exams and um, keep the Western music scene alive in Sri Lanka. Danu, I have known since my college days. He's a Pete Wright, like I am. Um, I've known him since, since he was just about two foot off the ground. And he has grown into this great, humongous media personality. He has been a trendsetter, and uh, with all his innovative uh, um, columns and Danu, with fi Danu on Fire, um, date with Danu, then all the other written, per, written uh, media things that he does and of course the radio personality that he is and TV personality. He is an amazing, uh, amazing guy who and I'm, I'm I have a pleasure in um, having known him for all these years, which is I think almost maybe 15, 15 20 years, which is great. So we have Manu Chanmugam and Niyomaldi Alvis. Today, my goal is to make Neoma smile throughout the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go, it started out. Well. Yeah. yeah, great. So, they're also, uh, I went to the same school they went to, obviously, we have an age gap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's how I large. have to. Yeah, they're very Pete Wright. They're very, they're very Pete Wright, I must say. Yes. Uh, so to start with, I so we don't call him Mano Chanmugam, we call him Uncle Mano. I think the whole of St. Peter's College community itself calls you yes, Uncle Mano. That's right, yes. Yeah? Mm. Uh, so I met him for the first time in 96. I was in the choir and we were the front row sopranos, the ones who tend to go flat. So they put you in front <laughs> so you're not going to sing into another person's ear, make everyone go flat. So we were one of those. And he came to speak <coughs> to us about St. Peter's celebrating 75 years at that time God. and why it was so important for us to celebrate and sing. So he, that was the first time I met him. The second time I had been promoted to the second row. I was not <laughs> going flat. Yes, <laughs> and that was for Saints Go Marching in 97 where we sang Oh in the Saints and he taught us the song. So that's how I remember him. Neoma, we were all scared. <laughs> we barely even touched the piano. Yes. We barely looked at him because he used to give us the looks of death. 
<laughs> so did his brother. <laughs> and we were just dead scared. So that's how I know them, just to give you a brief. Uh, so to start things off, how are you, Uncle Manu? Fine. Lots of changes in life and big difference between 1974 the first time and now, because 20, 25 years have passed. Um, still, the mind is still quite active. Which is great. I don't know, I think the body has slowed down. Hmm. But I think that's to be expected. But of all things that I remember of you, you were small, you were cuddly. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and uh, then suddenly, as you said, you yeah. came from the first row, you went back to the second, <laughs> also because you were much bigger than the others. Correct. <laughs> and the, the, if you were in the first row, you would, have, you would have hidden two people behind you. So I think that's why you were Correct, exactly. I agree. I just really thought I was not going flat. <laughs> 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 I kept it to that. So Neomal, how are things these days, especially we are going through such a different timeline yes. in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Have you adjusted to it? trying our best to adjust to all this, um, the chaos that's going on. At the moment, first it was COVID, and now it's this economic crisis. So it's a, it's a matter of survival, I would say. You know, mm. It's about trying to survive from day to day, trying to uh, secure your basics, you know, basics to travel about your gas and your yeah. whatever. And uh, other than that, we're fine. We're keeping well, keeping very busy. We're still doing the Royal Schools of Music. Right, and uh, they do have moved to an online system now, so which is um, very little work for us, but we keep in touch with all yeah. our teachers and candidates, so life is fine, not too bad. That's for amazing. Now. Yeah. So, um, one of the reasons I wanted to also speak to Uncle Manu today yes. was the fact that you have gone through life in all dimensions in Sri Lanka. You have seen the 70s where things were just terrible, and then we picked up again. Then we went through 83, then we went through the war, mm. then we went through this, the bomb. You have seen it all and you would have seen how the rupees in your hand just literally dwindled. went off fashion yes. and dwindled, dwindled. Just now no, even a yeah. 5,000 rupee note is nothing. <laughs> nothing it's just yes, considered yes. paper. Yes, yes. Um, also Pete tried only was printing at a rate. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, yes. 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 <laughs> That's the only one problem there. With the beat rides, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On this side and that side. That side, of course. <laughs> so, uh, Uncle Mano, tell me, looking at Sri Lanka today, what did you ever think we'll be here in 2022? Well, yes, but in what state of mind? I could never imagine because we have been so many changes from Mrs. Bandranaika's time when everything was rationed and when I came to this country, I thought, my goodness, we are so, so trailing back and mm. almost back into the Middle Ages. But it soon became much more joyous. And, uh, but then came all the other little, uh, little bits of tragedy that came, I think, to purify my soul. And that the worst, of course, was 83. Mm when I lost my home and my office in a matter of two or three hours. And that's a brilliant story. I'm going to let you hear it <laughs> when we do come back here. Uh, no, because, because everything changed so suddenly. And I couldn't believe that from being a peaceful country that we were, we were suddenly into turmoil that could not be even measured because it was so intense and came so suddenly. So there we are. That was, uh, that was again the pur a purification of the soul, I think, when the Creator brought you into a country where everything was going so beautifully mm. and suddenly, overnight, it changed. Uh, we're going to speak more when we do come back because there's a break both that's staring at me. We're going to get into a break. When we do come back, we'll speak more. It's safe to say. Welcome back to the show. So I really wanted to, uh, there's, there's an interesting part to them. They're very artistic. Uncle here is an artist, uh, he's an engineer, and you also got into architecture in a way, in a very different way, and you like this very colonial English looking homes. And oh, yes. both of y'all have been working on these projects yes, quite a lot. Yes, for many years. Tell me, how did this 
passion become a kind of a profession? You, it is your well, influence that I follow. So, well, I think <laughs> so. I think because traditional art, yes. especially architecture, is not geared into time. It is it is something that continues through the centuries, from the time of the Greeks and even the Romans. The, that, that kind of majesty in 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 the in presenting a building or in doing anything to with the arts was very uh, intricate dynamic and most of all soul stirring and that is i think the the real secret behind the perennial architecture other things change and the change is so fast that you don't even know what is new and what is old but but when you get to greco roman background Ooh. you are into permanence and that's the great thing i think permanence because when something is permanent you whatever era you're born into these are the ones that sparkle and keep you going i think for myself so how how do you all do these projects who draws well in the, at the beginning some years ago if i may of course <laughs> uh, we had a huge uh, uh, company that had we had engineers we had draftsmen we had uh, quantity surveyors right and then uh, at which point uh, there was a time when it was getting too difficult financially to run all these things so mm. in 99 that is i think when i came mm. into the situation mm. equation or whatever and i said you're not going anywhere I just shut the whole operation down so which we did but we retained our drawing office mm. and so we had our draftsmen um doing all our work projects and whatever and then when we eventually moved to piliandala um we managed to take two of our drawing uh, draftsmen and then we kept going until mm. there came a time when we thought we don't need them either <laughs> so we started outsourcing our work so right. whenever there was work so that's what and we did and you all have always loved these tall ceilings and like mm. lot of well, windows well that's ankamano signature his yeah. design his arches he's called uh, if if there are arches in a building or that's mano's architecture right. that's that's what uh, most of the architects used to refer him to him as right know. so uh, um and that's amazing and um uh, attention to minor details is something that i've always admired when it comes to the work that they do one example i'll tell you there's a plant <laughs> in their garden it's beautiful the way it grows normally it's like a small stick <laughs> and there's like some leaves on top i've always thought this plant was just overrated for no reason because it looks naked all the way to the little bushy part on top but at their house it grows this way <laughs> and all of them stand with bush all along so what he does is he turns the plant to a side so it has to grow looking for the sun so it has branches so this is just an example of what what correct yes 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 i remember these things yes. so uh so that's a little bit about uh, the architecture and i've always admired uh the hunters in if you have uh, not seen it it's beautiful uh and when you all are in hunters in do you all even know that you all in piliandala does it feel like that no it's a very universal place mm. i think because uh back into the creation of hantazen all my architectural ideas came from my being in england and traveling especially to spain and italy right Ita- italian and spanish architecture is something much warmer than the cold north of england or no north of europe really mm. where things are just squares and mm. you know. so i think the further south you get i think the heat of the sun and the the warmth of the people gives you a lot more in their architecture and mm. what they do so that's what i feel right or wrong right well it's all it's just a personal yes feeling and uh so music has been a part of both your journeys yeah. uh new you come in my opinion in a musical family yes i started piano when i was about 6 i think uh, again i think uh, music lessons were organized for my elder brother and he refused to go on the particular day and so i was sent oh, as as a we are wasting this money just yeah, saying this one a <laughs> typical you know how the parents are yeah yeah <laughs> in that time and uh, place anyway so uh, i ended up starting fairly young and then of course it went on from doing But you fell in love with it at the first class. Uh well I liked I used to play by ear that's what right. happened. So but I hated going for classes. I hated going for the 
music lessons. Because they my, had to make you play Mary Had a Little Land for the longest precisely. time. Precisely. And yeah. then, but my mother <laughs> made me go. And yeah. I sort of appreciate that because now, where, from what I've achieved and where I've ended up, it, it's the most great, great, it's the greatest thing that I have ever done, you know, learning to play the piano, to be able to go anywhere, you see a piano, you just go sit and play, you know, you can entertain people, make people happy. His brother gave me a name in school, his, his brother's name is Johan, uh, he gave <laughs> me a name in school which went on for a long time, up to now certain people do call me that, call me Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still in people's mind. Anyway, let's get into a game and it's called Yes or No. We, we tend to get to know a better side. See you on the other side. Yes. All right, so sometimes we think these very small questions tend to not matter, but this is where we come to know a person's personality. So if it's a yes, it's a yes, if it's a no. And if you think it's a maybe, you can do the middle one. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we couldn't do a maybe, so we thought this will be the maybe action. Mm. All right. Do you pay attention to little things that matter? Yes. Would you get tired of a relationship if your partner wanted too much of attention? No. Yes. No. Oh, how sweet. No, that, that <laughs> would be no, yeah. Very bad of you, Uncle yeah, Manu. Yeah. Uh, are you sensitive to other people's feelings? Yes. yes. Sorry, yes. I do. Oh, good. I think. Uh, do you ever notice bad um, habits about others quickly? Yeah. Do you see your challenges as a disadvantage? No, no, definitely no, no. no. Have you ever felt like you are surrounded by people who are toxic? <laughs> yes, yes, sorry, yes, sorry, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Can you memorize a complete song in less than two hours? No. Yeah. Definitely no. <laughs> All the choir boys will know when we don't know the word. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you sing it to the tune <laughs> and it sounds right. Uh, can you stay, uh, can you stay for a stay without taking anyone? Can you go on a stay and stay without taking anyone? Yes. Uh, oh, you, you can't. I have to talk to someone. Ah, really? Otherwise I'll talk to myself at least. Oh, that's what this I do. This mouth needs to move. That's what I do now. <laughs> when I'm on my own, I talk to myself. I have to talk. Uh, can, would you ever allow your partner or lover to take your phone for a week and use it as theirs? I will. Don't know. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Will you ever cry over a heartbreak? It could be emotional, friendship, relationship, whatever. Yes. Yeah. You won't cry, but you will not know how to show it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you're yeah. right there. Yes. <laughs> you want to cry, but you will not cry. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is Neo Mal. That's, that's, that's how it is. All right, let's get into a break. I'm going to say, well done, well done. Uh, we'll come back with more. Do stick around. It's Take with Dhamma. Uncle Mano has had a very colourful life. He has been through it all. God called him once, he joined the, Sorry, wanted to be, a, a, be a priest and then he decided to step out of it and then there you go, he had so many things that happened in his life. Let's speak about that. How did you have, the, I know you're a very God-fearing man and you love Mother Mary and, and that's a relationship I think it's beautiful yes. and I have always thought, you call her your mum always. But tell me that calling, why didn't you go through with it? Well, the, the way the calling came was that I was forced to do medicine. Mm. My father was a doctor and a surgeon. My brother was a doctor and a surgeon. And they both said, you must do medicine. My two doctors enough? No, in the yeah, yeah, but that was terrible. And my first attempt was when I went to see an autopsy. And when the dead man was chest was cut open by us with a saw. <laughs> what? And, but the saw went up to the heart. Uh, I saw 
a bit of darkness <laughs> and the next thing was everybody was laughing and I was on the ground. <laughs> so I said, thank you very much for medicine, that's where it ends. <laughs> and then I said, if I can't cure bodies, I'll try and cure souls. souls. So that's how the bad reason for accepting to go to the seminary, mm. but that's how it happened. And did you enjoy it there? I enjoyed the seminary life, but of course it was a hell of a come down from my sleeping on a box string mattress mm. and with my mother's bedspreads all done with cross stitch. Mm. And we went to the first night seminary and I was surprised that there was no mattress. <laughs> there was just <laughs> a, a mat, wooden board. Uh. Wooden board I see. And on it was a mat and on it a sheet, a single sheet. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know that because time, Vatican is, is one of the richest institutions in the world. Yeah, but don't don't forget that was pre. Uh, it pre Vatican II. Pre Vatican II. Yeah. Vatican II oh. changed the whole concept oh, of the concept. church. Right. And the, and the way the seminary should be organized. Vatican pre Vatican II, we were not allowed to go home. We never went to our homes mm. once we left, and it was seven years, four year, uh, one year of um, novitiate three years of uh, philosophy and four years of theology. Wow. And you didn't go home in any of those seven years or eight years. And you completed all seven years? No, I went to six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> At six and a half, I started asking yes. questions. And uh, my, my rector said, if you think you want a free, I asked for a year uh. to consider the whole thing because I was getting confused. Uh. And he said, if you are asking for a year, that means you have no vocation, Mano. <gasps> brother Mon, Mano, by the way. <laughs> so brother Mano <laughs> had, to, had to go back yes. and be in the, in the, I went home. What did your dad say when you decided you want to go there? Dad loved the whole thing, my gosh. He's so anti-Catholic. <laughs> and he, he, was, he was a good Methodist <laughs> and total anti-Catholic. <laughs> And it, it came to me with a shock. Apparently, at their wedding, uh. Father Griot was a French priest. Uh. Uh, he, uh, at the very short service at the cathedral, uh. no mass, no candles, no, no bells, flowers, no nothing. flowers. Only the hymn. Griot saying, "It is with pleasure and regret <laughs> that I, I congratulate you." <laughs> and this hit my father's head. They then went to Candy the next week, where the, the, the Methodist minister said, Miss, Mrs. Chamagum, we'd love you to come for a service. And as she went there with my father, she said, uh, we welcome you with open arms. Oh, so. And anything you want, please let us know, and we'll be there to help you. Mm. They come out of church and said, my father said to my mother, now you see the difference between my religion and your <laughs> bloody religion. <laughs> So that was a, that was a very nice thing, yeah. isn't it? Where there is the one saying come and yeah. the other one saying pleasure and regret. So, so now when you went back home, you took an year to think? Not, not, not a year. It was much quicker because Father <laughs> Rector of St. Peter's called me and said, why don't you come and teach at college? Mm. So I went for the first time to teach at St. Peter's. And what an experience. <laughs> there were the boys whom I studied with who were going to do their... Uh, pre-medical and things, and I was there now as teaching them. The and, and it was quite an experience. Mm. So, only for seven or eight months. But you were also had, did you also have girlfriends and My gosh, did only, marriage? only one mad girlfriend <laughs> who wanted to marry me. That so was soon after you coming out of the seminary? No, even before. During? <laughs> no, before. Oh, before. <laughs> yeah. During would have been shocking. <laughs> During only, only yes. they came I'll tell you, I was made to get a very beautiful girl uh. who was a dancer. Uh, said, you can organize a concert, brother, said my rector, uh. my uh, principal. And I, I called this girl and she came and she said, can I, can I get dressed in my dancing kit? So I gave her my a room. room, yes, and my gosh. There was enough. There was a prude of a of a of a professor uh. who thought I was very promiscuous. <laughs> In his mind, she went out and pregnant. No, and she, <laughs> he course. went. He went to Father Rector and said, 
father, your know, mano, that, that girl came, that dancing girl, <laughs> and he gave her his room to get dressed in. What a terrible thing to do for a prince. <laughs> so there we are. Uh -huh. That's yes. that that was really that's a, that's yeah. So that okay. So you have done it all. You've been a teacher. You have. Engineer, you have become, tried to become a priest, a doctor. Yes. Yes. It's terrible. No? Yeah. Like, what? But what was the one that made you fall in love? Music. Music has always been there. My mother taught music, uh, and uh, I was only four when she got me to study under her. Then I couldn't do any music under her, and I came on onto the the. Uh, Two lovely burger ladies, mm. Miss Wombeck, who was tall and thin mm. and with a long pencil waiting to knock you on your fingers. Mm. And there was Ethel Mack, who was fat and short mm. and much more <laughs> nice to, to warm. A chubby warm. ones are always kind. Yes. Yeah. So I had both <coughs> extremes. Yes. One was seven, six foot six. And the other one was four foot five. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> and you were right in the middle of in both. In the middle of both. <laughs> right. Both were lovely, were lovely ladies, yes. and I enjoyed my music very much. Brilliant. Uh, storytelling is an art, and he has the best version of it. Uh, we're going to get into another game that I really like, and y'all are going to fight for a prize. Oh my God! We'll see you after. Now these are normally tricky questions and you have to be My God. truthful when you answer. My <laughs> you can also explain your answer if you would My like to. Uh, but you're fighting for this prize, I know for a fact that, you know, I don't know who's going to win, but anyway, <laughs> um, these questions come from a point of fun and love, yes, so yes, yes. nothing mm. personal. Alright, first question, Rohan de Lanarol, Ishan de Lanarol, according to you, who has the better voice out of the duo? Both of y'all can answer. Very embarrassing question <laughs> to start with. But I think they both got beautiful voices. The one more with the baritone type and the other one much more... Like a bassy voice. A bassy one a bassy and the voice. other one was more... A tenor. A tenor, a tenor yeah. The both had charm of their own and both went beautifully together. That was, I think, the best part of it. Yeah, there was. Yeah. They sang, all their duets were yeah. very well matched. Huh? My question is, yes. personal favourite. Personal favourite is the... Is, uh, Can we say both? <laughs> <laughs> both are personal favourites. <laughs> no, but of the two, I, I think Rohan is more prim and proper and the younger one is much more Emilio so I prefer mm. the younger one younger one mm. I think I'll also have to go with Ishan I, I like his voice it's very warm um, how low can you go low and yeah. warm yeah low. of course <laughs> Rohan is of course a fabulous tenor yeah. as well so, yeah. 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 and brilliant yeah. stage presence correct yes. yeah. Right, yeah. you have seen the interior of the temple trees throughout the years this question is to you Uncle Manu mm. In your opinion, during whose occupancy did it look its best? I hate to say this because I'm, I'm definitely biased. <laughs> it's, it's Ranil who made it a home. Okay. The others had it more like a temple. Can I add to that? Um, during the time of 2015 to 2019, um, I think it was my three effects. She brought a lot of mm -hmm. elegance into that place. Elegance. Beautiful elegance. Mm. A lot of things. It was, we walked in immediately after the previous regime and it was like a Vesakudu. Mm. So that's how it was. So now, and she converted it in beautifully into something very elegant. Very nice. Brilliant. Who do you think should be the next president of Sri Lanka? Whoever you feel. The poor man has been six times a prime minister but never won. So I'd like to, that if he has one term as president. Yes, I also feel that he should get a shot at it. Hmm. Yeah. Do you consider go to go home gamma to be a <coughs> positive or a negative thing when it comes to marketing Sri Lanka internationally? Negative. 
negative for us. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have worked with many people on the grand piano. <laughs> not worked on many people, <laughs> worked with many people <laughs> on the grand piano. <laughs> Who has been your favorite from the following? Soundary David, Niranjan D. Silva, Neomal D. Alvis, Dilip Seniviratna. <laughs> I don't know. Who do you think is your favorite? You can easily say Neo and move on, but no, I can't. <laughs> clearly you're not in the list. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even come close to that. No, but I, I, I know my I, answer, so. No, but yeah, there we go. I'm waiting for you. Soundary is a b very, very versatile pianist. Niranjan, I know because he sits there and he's been. <laughs> now the third one? Dilip Senivaratna. Oh. No, he's. Uh, <laughs> he's also Pete, right? Yes. Yes, but. I feel, can I. Can yeah, I yeah you answer. In, yeah. I think. Uh, both, so, not both, all three of them. Uh, Soundari, Niranjan and Dilip are fabulous musicians and in their own different uh, genres and they are super. You had Mano Chanmugam in your list. Yeah. My, my, to me it, it has been Mano Chanmugam, his greatest, he has been my greatest influence. So I feel all three of them are fabulous, are top rated musicians in their own fields. Soundari as a pianist, Niranjan as an organist and Dilip as a jazz pianist, one of our best, yes. one of our best. No? Dilip has a lot of, uh, lot of uh, originality creativity and originality. Yes. And his ear music is oh, all yeah. by ear. I had to turn pages for her <laughs> on, on one of the programs and I couldn't, I couldn't find anywhere where the, I could read the music because Soundri was doing her own thing and much better than the composer. So, I just yeah. <laughs> That much good for Soundri. <laughs> all right. Your favorite host on stage Kumar De Silva, Arun Dias, Faisal Bonzo. Arun. 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 Arun yes. Absolutely, hands down. He's just, I think he's an encyclopedia. Unbelievable. And Unbelievable. Yes. What? A man who I think is a treasure. Yes. yes. And the knowledge he brings out on stage. I, he, I'm, I'm, unbelievable. You know, I, you know, I've always wanted to have him on the show. I'm also so scared to ever do a show with him. Because his nuances, always his newness. Yeah. Yes. You don't know what he's going to say. He's absolutely And that's what's brilliant. so nice. Mm. He's also a pianist. Huh? Oh, really? Yes. yes. And, a, and a jazz yes. pianist for that. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. And that's why he knows his music, yes, the way right, he yes. talks yes. about yes. it. Yes. Uh, that's amazing. Yes. In your opinion, whose partnership will, uh, will form an ideal government to lift Sri Lanka to its best. Your options are Ranil and Chandrika, Sajit and Ranil, Ranil and Mahinda, Sajit and Gota, Anura uh, Kumar Disanayaka and Ranil, mm. Chandrika and Maitri Bala I would say Chandrika and Ranil. Ranil, yeah. yeah. Chandrika and Ranil. Ranil. Brilliant. Yes. Final question. <laughs> Describe the cardinal in one word. I don't have one word. Many okay, words. sentence even. Ankamana will I would one. say a, a paragraph. Su surprising personality. Surprising because you don't know where he is at any one time. Yeah. I must agree with that, yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so very much. Well Thank done, you. I must say. I will have to give this to uh, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm, I must say, Uncle Manu was very honest with his answer. <laughs> so I'm going to just leave it there. Yeah. Yes. Both of you can just become beautiful in the oh process. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. Well done. Yeah. Uh, are we going to a break, Charlie? Yes, we are going to a break. We'll see you up. Gotta ask to dish some dirt. So I have been told stories uh, many times when I have sat with Uncle Manu about 83 riots and what a toll it took on so many people. Um, and you had some of your prized positions just thrown, broken, not for any reason, but just because they could. And 
and have we forgotten that so soon like for me as as a boy who was not even born at that time i've seen videos and read about it and for me it's so painful to know that how a person could turn on another person so badly and we saw something similar to that on the 9th of april and it was scary it was literally scary we just thought of the war again what would you tell us uncle mano over the years of experience and what you have seen well i think everybody says it's to do with ethnicity i think it has nothing to do with ethnicity i think with singalese as a nation have been very tolerant there have been the exceptions and the tamils on the other hand have been very orderly with exceptions of getting a bit rough and tough this is something to do with human nature nothing to do with ethnicity and i think that is where we all fail to understand why a country which is so beautiful cannot have peaceful existence right through um i have a feeling that this com comes from the fact of sometimes jealousy now jealousy again has nothing to do with ethnicity mm. people fa feel some are more privileged than others and that is i think one of the main reasons why they burst into homes destroyed things that they would normally cherish and keep and and destroying even what happened in a few months ago the things that we are so precious destroying it had no meaning whatsoever it was just i just that's what i say it's nothing to do with ethnicity it is purely to do with individuals who think they know and don't know a damn thing i Ooh. think that's what it's all about so sad but there we are and we have gone through it 83 was a, was a series of unforeseeable things that happened so fast that today you would think twice before even talking about it. the country degraded itself because of that unthinking attitude of human beings what happened in just a month ago was the same we degrade ourselves and the country by our very un uncalled for uh, behavior i think that is the only way to describe it so we are sad and to see a country which i think should have blossomed into perfect uh, especially in the way we were going we would have been very much higher in the level of of our living standards living standards and everything else <coughs> but this suddenly dips and every time this happens it dips again yes. so what we have to learn is never to do it again but i don't know oh. judging by human nature it might happen again what what was your feeling when your house was destroyed when your office was destroyed and you were helpless and sometimes you might even wonder whether these people who knew me who would have seen me every day yeah. walked into my house and did this what was your feeling at that time at that time it was only the fact that i had the previous week i had given a space for a volleyball court mm. in my garden and i had the youth in the in the locality to come to play volleyball and i couldn't believe that any of them could have joined in this mm. creating such a chaos in a home that had all the reasons to give them love because i i was very very keen on helping all the, the little people who needed help and and i i couldn't understand but i was told they came from not from the road but from the lake and it was not the closest of my it was people from beyond what what went wrong i don't know but everything was chaos especially the burning they took 3 uh, days to burn the house because uh, the first day was only getting all the things upside down and uh, and i was going to go then gamini fonseca said to me don't go i have just been there and they think it's the end of the world so don't you dare go near your home so i didn't go near it and it all happened because i had gone to work that morning mm. and and didn't think any anything was wrong 
So it all happened so suddenly. And it's I so painful to even today to think of. Yes, because it was a chaos, chaotic, chaotic situation. Uh, Neil has a different side to him. He can actually cook really well. Oh dear. <laughs> My yeah. cooking prowess is... Uh, how, how has it been going? Because well, you have lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm Have glad about that because cooking. <laughs> no, the secret to that is I'm I'm on and off of my alcohol. So oh, right. I put on weight. I when mean, I drink a bit, it, it just comes okay. On. Seasonal so times. Seasonal times. Yeah, so that's right. Cooking well, I love cooking. I find it extremely relaxing. Is it the cutting and cleaning part? No, no, no. I have, I have slaves for that. That, that's Sorry. great. <laughs> <laughs> us. No, but I no. understand. My yes. sister also enjoys yes. cooking, but she says I hate the start and the end. Yes, cleaning right. up and cleaning up and washing up and yeah. all of that stuff. I actually did a um, uh, cater, not catered. I cooked for the Peter Wright Choral. I mean, oh, wow. some of them actually, not the the senior guys. Right. We had twenty five of them coming. When you say senior, like. Your my, time. Vintage, <laughs> my vintage, my <laughs> vintage. Nothing. Right. Um, I actually thought of asking you as well, but then I thought I was not that senior. <laughs> you're not that senior. You're uh, at least a generation lower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, that went off very well. I mean, yeah, 25. I mean, the uh, boys. I'm um, guys with their wives and their yeah. kids as well. So men, is, uh, men and yeah. Yeah, boys, it? guys. Guys. Yeah. Please. But so. when you say wives and kids, then yeah, yeah my God, yeah, then no. it's like a hundred. <laughs> yes. So it, that's why I had to limit it 25 because I can't do more because than 25 that. at least four in the family. So that means yeah, that's hundred. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So. That's but fine. I do Christmas as well, Christmas dinner yeah. and all of that. Well, I have tried his food. It's delicious, actually. <laughs> so, uh, because there's no shortcut to Neoma's cooking. If it's <laughs> supposed to be one kilo of butter, one kilo of water. <laughs> yes, my God. There's no, yes. there's no trimming the edges. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so no, that's no. why it's always quality. Uh, we're going to speak more when we do come back. Uh, thank you for sharing your stories. Because it's, uh, it's remarkable. Because you have even been there from the Second World War. Yes. Yeah. You would have been um, 1948, yeah, you would have been, how old were you? 15? 48. I was six, 17. 17, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing, yeah. Were you yeah. in Sri Lanka at that time? Yes, I think so. Yes, I went to England first in 1950. So you saw all these planes bringing down? We were at mass at, at uh, the church in Thopu, Nigambo. Mm. And uh, during elevation, I come out because I can't bear to hear sermons. Generally, sermons are so dry <laughs> that it's the best time to walk out and say, I'm going to go to the loo. loo. <laughs> but there aren't loos in many loos in churches, churches. especially out there in, mm. in Kochika. Then you have to go to a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Coconut tree. So, so I went out and then I heard this <laughs> distant drone and I said, well, I wonder what that is. I didn't know till much later that day. Mm. that Colombo was bombed for once and and apparently they just they were s slaughtered in that run and lots of the plane cr crashed mm. because they didn't expect uh, that have you met the Queen yes you have yes I met her twice twice yes but very nice incident because I had an uncle of mine who was general and a very close friend of the Queen and General Mutukumaru, Anton. So both times he came to England, the, it was Buckingham Palace that phoned to ask when, when is your uncle coming and the, Her Majesty would like to see her. Oh. So once we went to the palace and once we went to Ascot in two different years. Very interesting. But at the palace once, I had to take Uncle Anton up because he was, had herpes Mm. And when uh, they said the, the, Her Majesty will see, the doors opened and she came out of this room in Buckingham Palace, the corner room. And uh, my uncle introduced me and I shook hands with her and then she held, I held my uncle because of this herpes. She said, I will take you in and she mm. held him and took him inside. That was in Buckingham Palace. Other one was at Ascot, when we were told um, that she was going to be there. And uh, funnily enough, when they phoned and said, Her Majesty would like to meet. So I said, uh, what about Thursday? Because I was going to, mm. s uh, to, to on my work to, to Slough. And, he, and she said, 
He said, oh, that's fine. Uh, we'll be in Ascot and we'd like for him to come for tea at 3.30. And 3.30 is 3.30, right? 3.30 is sharp. Yeah, of course, they'll come at 6 o'clock and say, they think oh. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I am told the Queen watches this show. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. At least some Queen is. <laughs> Let's get into a break, we'll see you after. <laughs> They are not that active on Facebook and Mr. Manu Chanmugam is not even on Facebook. <laughs> so we had to do some serious digging to find a few pictures and let's ask the stories. In the background you may hear somebody grilling. I promise you it's not on this show. <laughs> Just wanted to make that clear, <laughs> so that you know. Anyway, we have found a few pictures. Uh, Uncle Mano, do you remember oh. this passport photograph? Oh my God. <laughs> this is your Google search result. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and this also is in the Pete Wright archives. Yes, sir. When was it? See, you remember. Yes, that's the one. That one is a passport. It was taken by Donald's studio, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it is for his passport. <laughs> yes, for his passport. You have given a slight smile to the camera. Yes, yes. Yes, I was told to smile. That was late 90s, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, about yeah. 90? Yeah. This particular photo. Oh, oh that I remember. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I still have the originals. We did this photo shoot. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh. He was a superb uh, photographer. Was it you? Superb guy yes. Too. I didn't take the picture, but I was yes. there. Now... Oh, that's nice. Who is you here? The one in the... Cassock? Cassock that's is me. Yes. That's really? And, yes. and the other is my elder brother, that's why Eugene. They look, they look alike, is it? Alike, yeah. yeah. I like your elder brother's pants. It's very gathered. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, yes. It's very gathered. It's yes. Was that the style at that and time? This Probably was me is. in my cassette, don't forget. Yeah. I know. And mm -hmm. how old were you at this time? Uh, I would have been 23, 22. Oh my gosh, that's uh, my God, a lovely picture. Of There's Uncle Jit there. Yes. With uh, oh. one of the hunters and parties, yes. Yes. You want me to but mention the other people? Oh, no, yeah, no, why not? Yeah. When was it? Do you remember? It was it a Christmas um, birthday? Looking at the way Uncle Jit is dressed, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could have been Christmas. Yes. But what about the one on the left? That's Usha and Usha? Ranali, of course. And Rana yeah. Rana Ramali. Ranali. Ramali. No. <laughs> it's an awkward name. M Y R. Ranali. Ranali. Yeah, there you right. go. M is yes. used in the side yes. there. All right, this is the... Oh my God, that is the, my family brood. My yeah. brothers and my father in a wheelchair, of yeah. course. My goodness. All the boys, no? All one, except one. Yeah. The eldest boy is not there. The eldest brother is not there. And yes. your... And there's Johan and my other I brother. just wanted to point out one thing. Funnily, all of y'all are smiling in this. Oh. Probably, is, probably Uncle Mano took the picture. Because maybe. Yeah, you might I, have forced everyone yeah, to take a, at least a kuchi pack at there. Yeah, he's an <laughs> animator there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because otherwise it's hard to... Oh my gosh. God, my goodness. Where are you? Let me they stop are, you they first. Are in the black. The black. The black that was on my, the day of my perpetual vows and candy. Ampitya. Seminary, Seminary in Ampitya. And who, who are the ladies next the to ladies you? The ladies are my mother on the left. Okay. On my right, rather. Uh. No, on my left mm. is my mother. Right. On my right is my eldest brother. Uh. Uh, that's uh, his wife. He's the that. doctor. Yes, he's Ranjan. And the wife is also a doctor, Olga. Okay. On, on left of my mother is my Periyamma, my mm. mother's eldest sister. Uh, she married a judge. And then the dark one is Benita. Mm. And after that comes two of the young fellows. And yeah. Cousins, I think. Huh? Yes, Mohan. So Benita is also your mother's sister. Yes. He remembers everything. I know everything about his family for That's the last... That's amazing. Lovely, lovely picture that. Can you speak Tamil, Uncle Manu? 
very with the very surname sad of Chan to say, very sad to say i got referred in tamil two years running at st peters when i first year I you studied in english yes St. So Peter's had English medium at that yes, time. Yes, at that time, yes, they did. And then we just went back in time after DS making. <laughs> yes. uh, and then the first year I sat, I got a distinction in six subjects. I got referred in Tamil. <laughs> so I still got through and I was told to go to the higher national HSC, uh. Father Rector. But I said, Father, uh, then he said, why don't you sit for Tamil on its own? And I said, no, Father, I'll go up to the HSC, but I'll sit for the entire paper. I sat for the whole Seven subjects, six distinctions referred in Tamil. Are you? Second time. Yeah. Can you speak? Yes, then I decided to go to England and my grandmother, who was a very a Tamil scholar, she, she sent me the Vera Kesari paper mm. every weekend to London for me to study only the editorials. Right. So I memorized the editorials and then from the, my pride, when I went to England and my father said, sit for the London Matric, the last London Matric to be held in 1950, I offered two subjects besides English language, I'll offer Tamil as well, besides chemistry and physics. And believe it or not, I got a distinction oh, in Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because of my grandmother. Veera Hesari to the victory. Hesari, <laughs> the Hesari, <laughs> and the Veera, weekly Veera Hesari. Yeah. Yeah. But actually in Colombo they say, Manu Chanmugam. It's actually Chanmugam. Chanmugam. <laughs> Chanmugam. But it's Chanmugam here. Yes. <laughs> Just made a nicer tone. Yes. yes. Manu Chanmugam. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, uh, there are stories and stories with Uncle Banu. I should actually do another show with the two of you, just, <laughs> just to do continuation of it. Uh, thank you so very much for coming. Uh, it's so much fun. Um, I always say there's so much in this head. Yes. <laughs> and we have to just find a way to archive <laughs> it all yes. and just keep all these stories yes, going. Yes, yes. Uh, it's remarkable because you have seen so much. And uh, I'm so glad that I have. It's, it's a gr gross, God's grace that definitely yeah. Yeah. Through, defi definitely of course for sure uh, Neo thank you so very much pleasure uh, thank you Dano. He, he's definitely the silent supporter in many ways oh, yes. uh, he's <laughs> always there uh, supporting Uncle Mano thick and thin uh, yeah it could be his talents wishes mm. likes annoyance at times it's, yes. all, <laughs> it's all taken and done with yes. love yes. but um, and also someone who is very um, you defend Uncle Manu at oh, any yes, given yes. time. If Absolutely. anybody tries to use you, because you have a giving. Oh, yes. Yeah, giving, giving wallet. No. Yes. Yeah, now <laughs> wallet has been just taken away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No so, more to give. Yeah, Nothing to so give. that's what. So yes. No more earning. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good. In a way, there's somebody to yes. look out for you, which is yes. wonderful. Yes. Thank you so very much. I'm so happy that you made it. It's an honor to have spoken to uh, a person who we have all looked up to throughout our life in school. And we have always remembered and loved as Uncle Manu. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank all you. your kindness and for all the work done by High TV and High TV and I can see that lovely thing going up and down <laughs> on the rail. <laughs> I wish I was on that one because I'd like a rich ride <laughs> up and Charit, down. Charit, he wants a ride on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice feeling, I'm sure. Yeah. So I'm sure. Uh, somebody to push. I'm yeah. just telling you, he Hello? wanted a ride at the end of the show. <laughs> he's, not a, he's not only pushing, he's pulling as well. He's pulling, then he's pushing, he's pulling, he's pushing very nice. That's thank how you. it happens. <laughs> and thank you very much for being. Um, and thank all of you for your lovely support. Always. It was absolutely a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so do follow. There is also something called the Manu Chanmugam Foundation, a chance for you to uh, help kids who are talented in music to come forward. Um, so if you feel like, you know, you should bring out your talent, invest in it because it's a gift and you should never uh, not celebrate it. If it's music, I'm telling you. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. So always. On that note, yeah. we need to wrap things up. We will see you soon with another cool episode to date with Danu. Till then, you keep smiling. It's fine.